We continue to track breaking news. We have the latest on a school shooting that's left 13 people dead. Chilly rains on the way across much of central and eastern Kentucky. We'll put a track on those with your hour by hour forecast coming up. Luke Bryan fans will have to wait to see him in Lexington. Why the weather is keeping the country star from performing. Tracking, alerting, protecting. WKYT News starts now with breaking news. 13 people have died in a shooting on a college campus. Oregon's attorney general confirmed the death toll about 30 minutes ago. That shooting took place at Umpqua Community College. It is in the rural city of Roseburg, south of Portland. Investigators say the gunman died while exchanging gunfire with police. We're just now learning from the Associated Press that the Oregon governor now confirms that the shooting uh, was from a 20 year old male. Kenneth Craig is tracking the breaking details for us this afternoon. Gunfire broke out Thursday morning on the campus of Umpqua Community College in Roseburg, Oregon, about 175 miles south of Portland. At least 13 people are dead, and there are reports of 20 injured. Multiple ambulances raced to the scene to take the wounded to an area hospital. Police went door to door during the lockdown to get students out. It was really scary. All I remember is the officer banging on the door saying, Roseburg Police. He had the key to the door. He opened the door and said, come out with your hands up. Students and faculty were bused to nearby fairgrounds. News of the shooting made it to Capitol Hill. We extend our sympathy on best wishes and all the good thoughts that can come from here to the, another one of the devastating uh, violent gun acts in Oregon. CBS News has learned the shooter is also dead. Kenneth Craig, CBS News. The FBI is sending in teams of agents to assist local police in their investigation. It has been another rainy day across the area. And we're going to see more weather like this as we head into our weekend. WKYT's Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey is tracking it on the First Alert Defender. Hey, Chris. Hey, guys. Indeed, uh, keep the umbrellas handy right on into your Friday, your Saturday, maybe even into Sunday, too. Now, the rains that we have out there right now, not as constant as what we started out the day with. We started out the day with greater than a half inch in the parts of uh, the Lexington Metro this morning. Scattered sh uh, stuff showing up on Defender now. Get west of Danville and notice the movement is coming at us from east to west and a northeast uh, movement out of parts of Tennessee as well. Across the Lexington Metro, a little light shower on the west side of town. We will see the action trying to pick back up though across southeastern Kentucky where we're still getting in on uh, some of those scattered showers. Look at the volunteer state of Tennessee. Even a little bit of thunder and lightning popping there. And look at the movement lifting to the north as we go through the evening and overnight. And that's a sign of things to come. Area of low pressure right on cue developing across the southeastern seaboard. That's going to continue to throw juice into the bluegrass state over the next couple of days. Then we have a powerhouse of a hurricane. That's a Category 4 Hurricane Joaquin that is down in the Bahamas right now. Official track now from the National Hurricane Center is just off the East Coast. Though, word of caution, models are still all over the place over the next couple of days with where that system is going to go. Doesn't matter for our weather around here, guys. Our rain's going to be coming from the east. And just ahead, I'll show you why that increases and how an increase in winds may play a factor into those Friday and Saturday plans just ahead. Thank you, Chris. And people along the East Coast have been keeping a close eye on Hurricane Joaquin. New Jersey Governor Chris Christie has already declared a state of emergency because of flooding concerns. On Long Beach near New York City, bulldozers have been piling sand high. Many people there still remember the destruction Sandy left behind three years ago. It was a pretty scary scene the last time, and um, I would hope to God that we don't have to ever go through that again. The region is already dealing with problems from this week's rain. One person died in Spartanburg, South Carolina, when flash floods submerged cars. Police say wet roads played a role in a deadly crash. It happened about noon on the Mountain Parkway in McGoffin County near the Morgan County line. Two people were killed. WKYT Sam Smith is at the scene tracking the investigation. The crash scene here is cleared and traffic is able to flow again, but that was not the case this afternoon as the deadly wreck was being investigated. We're told this was a two vehicle accident and it involved drivers going in opposite directions. We're told one of the drivers lost control of the car because of wet roads and spun around once. A car going the eastbound direction T boned the car that spun out. 
The people in the eastbound car have traumatic injuries, but were alert and conscious when first responders arrived. They were taken to a hospital in West Liberty. Both of the women in the car that was hit were killed. This crash scene remains under investigation by Kentucky State Police. In McGoffin County, Sam Smith, WKYT. That stretch of the Mountain Parkway is known for accidents, but this one was the first deadly one on the McGoffin side in 15 years. Two people have died in a crash in Letcher County. That begins our county by county coverage. A semi and a car were involved in the crash on Highway 15 near Little Dry Fork around noon. A third person was taken to the hospital for treatment. Part of the road was closed for several hours this afternoon. In Scott County, charges have been reduced for a school bus driver accused of assaulting a student. The news graphic reports the county attorney changed Durbin Wallace's charges from fourth degree assault to misdemeanor harassment with physical contact. Police arrested Wallace last month. The boy's father says Wallace grabbed her five year old by the neck, banged his head against a bus window, then shoved him into a seat. Investigators say there is also video evidence. Some good news today for Fayette County Schools. State test scores released this morning show the district moved from needs improvement to proficient. William Wells Brown saw the largest score increase and is no longer the lowest performing school in the state. Bryan Station moved off the priority list but remains the 17th lowest high school statewide. The community support, the staff support, the student buy-in, that's what it takes to improve schools that are low-performing. And uh, we truly appreciate the support from the district, from our community partnerships. 24 schools were listed as needs improvement, down from 29 last year. Henry Clay and Lafayette High Schools were designated as distinguished, and SCAPA was named a National Blue Ribbon School. Around central Kentucky, Bourbon, Clark, Jessamine, Madison, and Scott Counties all scored in the proficient category. Woodford County ranked as distinguished. You can find out how your school did by checking out WKYT.com. Well, the rainy weather has forced some Luke Bryan fans to change their evening plans. The singer canceled tonight's concert at Talon Winery in Lexington because of the weather. This affected thousands of people. Kristen Kennedy shows us the challenge the rain created when setup began this morning. This was not the kind of night Luke Bryan imagined when he announced a stop in the bluegrass on his farm tour. Soggy roads and wet ground kept his team from setting up Thursday's concert. Bryan told 98.1 The Bull in a conversation on the phone that they canceled a couple hours before gates were to open. You got to start considering, you know, fans going out and parking and getting stuck, and it turns into, you know, you've got 10,000 people. In the world's largest mud bog. The tracks in the mud show where those trucks got stuck this morning. Dealing with that problem pushed organizers back so far that they were worried that they wouldn't be finished setting up in time for the concert. We didn't want to get out there and, and, and tear up this beautiful winery, and we want to we want to make this a positive thing, you know, from A to Z. We had to call it off because of timing and the weather conditions. Talon Winery's Lauren Manuel says no one wanted concert goers getting stuck like the setup crews did. They tried a lot of different ways to get trucks up there. They tried until the last minute and it just didn't happen. They'll try again Tuesday in Lexington. Kristen Kennedy, WKYT. Organizers say Tuesday's concert will run the same, hopefully no rain. Gates open at 2. The concert will begin at 7 o'clock. So we'll keep our fingers crossed that it's dry weather yes. for that concert. <laughs> UK basketball picking up an exciting recruit today. WKYT's Rob Bromley is here to tell us who is joining the team. Hi, Rob. Hello, and John Calipari landing a five-star forward. Wenyan Gabriel is coming to Kentucky. The 6'10 Gabriel made a big move up the recruiting ladder this summer. He is rated as high as the number 10 overall player in the country by Scout.com. Gabriel is out of Manchester, New Hampshire. He's going to high school in Massachusetts. He made an official visit to UK last weekend, and he said today he liked the way Cal was involved in his recruiting. He picked UK over Duke, Maryland, Connecticut, and Providence. Gabriel joins big man Ty Winyard and forward Sasha Kalia Jones in the class of 2016 for Kentucky. Rob, thank you. The Cats could land another recruit this weekend. Small forward Miles Bridges, who attends Huntington Prep, is scheduled to make his announcement Saturday. 
Russian airstrikes in Syria continue to concern U.S. officials. We take a closer look at the situation. You can no longer buy blinds from cords with cords from Ikea. The reason for that change in better living. And Lexstrand plans to change its routes, but some people living in Lexington in one neighborhood aren't happy about it. Why they're concerned about the plan on WKYT News at 530.